Today on What It's Like 1928, Stutz BB, Boat Tail Speedster, often referred to simply as the Black Hawk. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like, the channel that dives in deep with all of the specs, background information on the classics, vintage, some exotics. This channel is home for the orphan cars. We take the tour, button switches and knobs, and most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This 1928 Stutz Holy Grail is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, Morgantown, Pennsylvania, largest car consignment dealer in the northeastern region of the United States with over 850 cars for sale when recording this episode. It doesn't cost a dime to get in. Anybody can go there. For more information, pricing, and pictures pertaining to the Holy Grail, Stutz, BB, Boattail, Blackhawk, Speedster, click the link below after the show. For anybody that's local, there is a Monday night car show that happens in Lowville, Ohio, Monday nights. It starts May 8th. If you would like to meet up and drive to the car show together, we could totally do that. Email me. My email will be linked in the description if you're interested. Let's talk Stutz. Founded in Indianapolis, Indiana in 1911 as the ideal motor car. Founded by Harry... Clayton Stutz and Henry F. Campbell. In 1911, Ideal entered a car in the Indianapolis 500 and placed not first, not second, not fifth, not even tenth. They placed 11th and they coined the slogan, the car that made good in a day. I don't know of any other company that placed 11th and was like, yes, we got the success that we need to go on to become a successful automaker. Except for Ideal, which changed their name to Stutz in 1912. Some sources say 1913. Later on, Stutz would be credited for developing the underslung chassis, which greatly enhanced safety and cornering. The original Stutz Bearcat was one of the earliest cars to feature four valves per cylinder. In 1919, Harry Stutz, one of the founders was forced to leave the company by shareholders. He left and so did Harry Campbell around 1919. Alan Ryan Sr. and Jr. was left in control of the company and they tried to manipulate the stock prices and got caught. Stutz was delisted. Ryan Sr. was bankrupt by 1922. And by 1923, Stutz was under new management. During this period of time, Stutz marketed the safety car featuring safety glass, hill holding transmission called no back. It's also important to note in the early 20s, Stutz stopped making a serious race car. 1927, Stutz started messing around with a new chassis design. It was to be 1,500 pounds less than the Bearcat and riding a shorter wheelbase. Called the Black Hawk in 1928, Stutz raced the Black Hawk and it won race after race after race. They even took it to Le Mans, 24 hours of Le Mans, losing to a 4.5 liter Bentley. This is the last time an American car would come in second place until 1966. 1931, they offered the dual overhead cam 32 valve straight eight called the DV32, DV for dual valve. By the mid 30s, Stutz wasn't doing so good. They were charged with stock manipulation again. It was nothing like it was in the 20s, but it still wasn't a good look for their image. Filed for bankruptcy in 1937. Liquidation took effect in 1939. It's important to note that the company was revived in 1968 by our boy, Virgil Exner and James O'Donnell. Stutz Black Hawk was produced by Gia. The company is still technically in existence today, but they haven't built any cars since 1995. 1928 Stutz model lineup. If I missed any, put them in the comment section below, please and thank you. They offered the Bearcat, the Vertical 8, and the Blackhawk. Bodies and coach work could be done by many different coach builders. Let's talk specs. 131 inch wheelbase. It weighs 4,300 pounds. Price $4,900, which is equivalent to you spending $86,205.61 in the year 2023. There isn't a comparison for this car that is on sale today. Total 1928 Stutz production was 2,403 units. 
Moving on to engine. Only one engine on offer, 298 cubic inch displacement, inline, overhead cam, inline eight, 4.7 liters. It's good for 115 horsepower at 3,600 RPM. Could not find a torque figure. This engine features single overhead cam, dual ignition, nine main bearings. Underslung, worm drive, Lockheed, hydraulic brakes. This car also features a chassis lubricator. With the push of a button, it will lubricate all of the chassis components so you don't have to climb under the car and do it yourself. So let's talk styling. This is like a holy grail car for me. Stutz. So just look at the inside of the fenders. Have these leather aprons very interesting the way the fenders are designed and how they come down it's got the side mounts with the mirrors attached to the side mounts wing windows These are to regulate the air from coming in, blowing into your face. They help out tremendously. This car is a convertible, so the top does go down. But notice, it's wood and steel. Coming back here to the rear, notice it's a boat tail design. Here's what it looks like top down. I always was really fascinated by the boat tail design. I always wondered how they designed it. Gas filler cap. It appears that this is a rumble seat, but it's locked. The only reason I think it's a rumble seat is because this looks like a stepping pad. This looks like a stepping pad. Another stepping pad into the rumble seat. This is the most unconventional rumble seat I have ever seen ever. Because to use this, you would have to take this off. Otherwise, it's gonna come back and hit you. And this is three seater, this car is. Two people could sit here, or if you had three really small people could fit in there, but more or less two people in there. One person back here. This is a very interesting, and this all comes like, this is what the back of the rumble seat looks like. And there's more. There's another storage place right behind the rumble seat. So that is your trunk. This looks like a golf door where you could put golf clubs in too. So just want to show you this door. It's like lined in leather. So you can put golf bags or whatever in here, but also notice it is the shared space of the rumble seat. Notice this car does not have running boards. See like this Rolls Royce next to it, it has running boards. This one has just like a running, I don't know what you would call this, it's just like a step to step inside the car. The door handle looks like this. It looks like it would kill you if you got into a car accident. And the door panels are extremely basic. Door handle to pull the door shut, door handle to get out. It has a map pocket. Look, look how cool is that? <clears throat> look at the way that this is designed, how it flows. This car doesn't have a glove box, so we can't do the glove box test. It looks like it has two lights though, like this is a light and that over there is a light for the instrumentation. Here's what over the hood would look like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. Just wow. 
windshield wiper motor is right there and it's on the bottom of the windshield which is weird for a car this time period especially beings that you can crank this windshield out all of that is over here on to the button switches and knobs starting at the bottom of the dash that lever is for the cal vent two pulls i'm not 100 percent certain what they do i would think one would be for the choke the other one for the hand throttle but that is just speculation i'm not 100 percent sure what those do two lights for panel lighting first gauge has the speedometer notice it spins the odometer and tripometer both inside of it the amp meter oil pressure tachometer gasoline gauge which also spins coolant temperature so look at this interesting mechanism so these hook on to the steering rod so when you turn the wheels these lights up here turn as well with whatever direction you turn the wheels the lights will turn that way too It was hard to show this, but look at how this hood is designed. It curves and then it goes up to a point here in the center of the hood. It gets more protruded as it goes out towards the hood ornament. These louvers are different than any other louvers I've ever seen. Instead of the louvers being vertical, they're horizontal. Just different. Stuts nice and proud here in the front. Look at that hood ornament. Absolutely gorgeous. So getting under the hood, the horn is mounted really low down inside there. And look at the steering rack. And you can see the steering goes outside of the car. It has those exposed arms down there. This is the exhaust intake side. It's got one updraft carburetor. Just look at everything that's going on. Absolutely gorgeous engine. Distributor. Got two coils. So I'm assuming two sparks plugs per cylinder. On the positive side, the great name of Stutz, the heritage of Thoroughbred, Engineering, Exotica, Splendid, Coachwork, CCCA, Classic, Status, Against It, Extremely Scarce, Very Expensive, Mechanically Complex, Very Difficult to Get Specific, Engine Parts, As Well as Body Parts, and Finding People That Know These Cars Are Incredibly Rare and Hard to Come By As Well. Finding information on the internet is almost extinct. There is no information about any of these cars out there. So you have to go to a library. If you're looking to restore one of these, it might be really hard. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather, steak or chicken, paper or plastic, two scenarios today. Scenario uno, 1928 Auburn 888 Boattail Speedster or 1928 Stutz. Black Hawk BB Boat Tail or 1928 Duesenberg Speedster. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving to the second scenario, 1930 Duesenberg Model J or 1932 Stutz DV32 or 1930 Cord L29. Every car in the last scenario has something cool. The Duesenberg is fast. It has the power. Dual overhead cam for the Stutz and the L29 cord is front wheel drive. Going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to give both the name of the band and song title correctly. First person to do so will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. If you don't have Facebook, maybe you don't like Zuckerberg or whatever reason, shoot me an email. All of that information will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, here are some scenes for our next episode. 1939, Lincoln Zephyr. That's what's next. Tune in tomorrow 
Wednesday, 4.30, hopefully 4.30 Eastern Standard Time to catch that episode. And until then, toodaloo! Who is this kid? Get, get off the stage! Boo! You suck! You can't talk! Your voice, it sounds like nails on a chalkboard. Jay doesn't know jack shit about cars!